Hey guys, YouTube 100 here. All right, yeah, and you now here I am con to continue on with my ECW uh, pay per view reviews. Yeah, now, yeah. So you may notice that like I'm wearing a different shirt than I was wearing in uh, my uh, last uh, review that I just uploaded earlier this morning when I reviewed ECW Heat Wave 1998. Yeah, I actually did film that yesterday, and I meant to like I was trying to upload it yesterday, but yeah, for some reason like. Uh, like, as I was uploading it, there were, like, some issues with the processing. Like, it just, like, was not processing at all. I tried to, like, upload it, like, three different times, but there was, like, a processing issue with it. Like, it just was not processing at all. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. I was finally able to, like, get it uploaded this morning, and that processing issue was done with. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. That review was really, like, meant to go up yesterday, so I apologize for it, like, going up, like, a day late. Yeah. But, yeah. Here I am now to continue on with the ECW pay-per-view reviews. Yeah, and now next up for the next review now, here I am with a review for ECW November to Remember 1998. Yeah, yeah, but before I actually do uh, get started with this review, yeah, as I'm sure, like, some of you have probably heard about it by now, but if you haven't heard by now, uh, yeah, yesterday, um, superstar Billy Graham passed away. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, apparently Superstar Billy Graham, like, he's been, like, dealing with, like, a lot of medical issues over the last several years, yeah, like, uh, like, had some, like, sort of, like, hip issue and shortness of breath, and, yeah, just, yeah, there was, he's had, like, a lot of medical issues over the last, uh, several years, yeah, and, yeah, and yesterday he did pass away. Yeah, so, yeah, gosh, I mean, yeah, this really was just, like, yeah, it, it is really sad, yeah, plus... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and plus, yeah, it did, like, kind of, like, really strike me in a way, because, yeah, the Superstar Billy Graham is, of course, like, really, like, the only, uh, f former WWE champion that was actually based here in Arizona. So, yeah, so, yeah, being, like, from an Arizona myself, like, Superstar Billy Graham dying, like, it did, like, kind of, like, hit me in that sense, yeah? Yeah, of course, like, I didn't really get to watch a Superstar Billy Graham wrestle, yeah, but Superstar Billy Graham, like, competed, like, way before my time, so, yeah, so I didn't really, like, get to see him, like, in action back when he was actually a wrestler, yeah, but I do, like, uh, have, like, do know about Billy Graham, like, I've watched him a lot, and, yeah, and yeah, plus, yeah, like, Superstar Billy Graham was also, like, in the Legends of Wrestling games, games that were released, like, during the 2000s, like, you remember those games, Legends of Wrestling, yeah? Yeah, and I remember, like, playing as Superstar Billy Graham a lot, yeah. I even remember, like, when I was a kid, like, when I played, like, Legends of Wrestling 2, to be more specific. Yeah, I, like, uh, created myself in the game and, like, uh, had Superstar Billy Graham kind of, like, be, like, my mentor. Like, I would, like, you, I, like, made him, like, my uh, tag team partner in, like, tag team matches and stuff. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, really he did, like, a... Uh, do that with like superstar billy graham so yeah so i really do know of him yeah plus yeah i even remember like uh, i was i've even been to like a couple of uh wrestling events that billy graham actually did attend as well like is that the june 20th 2005 episode of raw like you remember superstar billy graham was there and judgment day 2006 where it showed superstar billy graham sitting in the front row yeah fortunately i didn't actually get to uh meet superstar billy graham yeah it kind of did suck that i didn't get to meet him but yeah it would have been like kind of hard for me to do that yeah yeah but yeah superstar billy graham has really like really like had a lot of medical issues as of late yeah and yeah he's even like been hospitalized over like at the mayo clinic here in arizona for a while yeah and yeah and finally like all like his uh medical issues have finally uh taken him and yeah he's passed away yeah, so yeah, really is like sad to hear that he's passed. Yeah, even like have like some of the a f few action figures of a superstar Billy Graham. Like uh, have like a uh, this one right here back when he was like young, when he was like actually like a regular wrestler. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, then I have like the three like limited edition action figures of like when he was older. Like have a uh, this one right here as well as a uh, this one with him in the pink suit. Yeah, as well as uh this one right here with him wearing jeans yeah so yeah so so yeah so oh yeah so i have like quite of these like a uh, superstar uh billy graham action figures yeah 
yeah, I have like all these like action figures right here. I keep them on my wall, yeah. And it is kind of nice to really have these now. Though I can just like keep them on my wall and really just have like some, uh, just some like a uh, like memorabilia of like the memory of a uh, superstar Billy Graham. Yeah, would have been nice if I was actually able to like uh, get these signed by him, especially like uh, the three limited edition ones. Yeah, but yeah, <sighs> yeah but yeah, I don't have a signature, but yeah. At least I'll be able to, like, always, like, keep these on the wall and really just always have, like, like some uh, memories of a uh, superstar Billy Graham. So, yeah, so, rest in peace to the man to be our, too sweet to be sour, lifts, eats T-bone steaks, lifts barbell plates. Yeah, rest in peace to superstar Billy Graham. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, and just, yeah, and I, I tell you, like, if I really was, like, a pro wrestler now, like, uh, yeah, I'd be, like, uh, wearing some tie-dye t-shirts now in honor of Superstar Billy Graham. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, rest in peace to Superstar Billy Graham. All right. Okay. Hey, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, on to the review. All right, so ECW November to Remember 1998. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, as I've been saying, like, uh, yeah, so far, like, uh, the ECW pay-per-views, like, up to, like, uh, the last one that I reviewed, Heat Wave. Yeah, ECW really was looking like they were really just like putting out like very mediocre at best uh, pay per views, like uh, like barely legal. Like their first one was great, but yeah, then they were just like really putting out like very mediocre at best shows. Like the yeah, with the ones that I've already talked about up through like the last one I talked about, Heat Wave. Yeah, and then yeah, then Heat Wave. Like as I said in that review, like. That was just really, like really a phenomenal show and like really among like some of the best wrestling pay-per-views of all time. Yeah. Oh yeah. So after watching that show, like it got me thinking like like it looked like maybe like ECW did finally like uh, settle into their groove and yeah and now like they were really gonna like uh, uh put out some uh, better pay-per-views and really like uh, uh really like uh, have some like pretty good uh, pay-per-views now and they would really like uh, be able to keep it up with it now. Yeah. And yeah, and now after watching uh this pay per view, did ECW do that? Well, yeah, it didn't really seem that they did. Yeah, this really just seemed like ECW has really like a uh, just gone back into the mediocrity. Yeah, this uh, event really was just a uh, it was a pretty mediocre show to be honest. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, there really was not really anything that memorable about the show. Plus, yeah, I really, as I was watching it, I was really just, like, pretty bored with it for the most part. I mean, yeah, this really just seemed to be just as mediocre as uh, the last uh, November to Remember pay-per-view. I mean, yeah, this really just, like, yeah, there was nothing about this show that really did stand out. I mean, it just seemed, like, very mediocre and boring. Like, just, yeah, there really wasn't really anything very memorable about uh this pay-per-view at all, Yeah. So I really am just like hoping that like a uh, heat wave is not really just the shining star of ECW's pay-per-views who is in the line of um, just a whole lot of uh, mediocre best pay-per-views. I really hope that's not the case. Like I really am hoping like as I'm going on with these reviews that they really are, they really do like get better and yeah, and ECW will actually like have some uh, um, uh, better pay-per-views as we're going on, and Heat Wave isn't just the shining star of, like, a very mediocre lineup of pay-per-views. Yeah, but yeah, this show, it really was just, like, pretty mediocre, and yeah, there's nothing about it that really does uh, stand out, to be honest. I mean, the most memorable thing about the show really just seemed to be the whole thing with Terry Funk, because, yeah, at, in the opening of the show, Terry Funk, like, uh, just, like, uh, came through the crowd, just, like, uh, kind of, like, uh, going off on a tirade, yeah, he'd like just like like kind of like belittling ECW and just like saying how like he was pissed off that he wasn't invited to the show and he was just like going off on like the fans and the people of ECW and everything. And yeah, and yeah, and that like kind of like continued on throughout the night. Like Terry Funk got involved in a couple matches and he kept like uh running out and yeah, he just like kept like going off about ECW like all night long. So, yeah, that really like, seemed to be, like, what the show was really, like, seemed to be centered around rather than the matches. So, yeah. So, if, like, the most memorable thing about it is just, like, uh, somebody just, like, going off ranting all night, that should probably, like, tell you, like, how unmemorable this uh, pay-per-view really is. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, I guess I'll just start talking about the matches. All right. 
So the show kicked off with uh, the BWO, the Blue Minion Supernova, versus uh, Danny Doring and Roadkill. And, uh, yeah, this really was just, like, kind of just like an average match. I mean, not really anything memorable about it. Like, it just kind of, like, seemed to be, like, just, like, uh, some uh, subpar in-ring action between uh, in uh, the two teams. Yeah. They really were just, like, kind of, like, going back and forth. There were, like, some double team moves used in the match. And, yeah. Then, yeah. Then, as I mentioned, like, uh, during the match, like, Terry Funk, like, uh, came out at ringside and, like, got involved in the match and he slapped the blue mini at one point, yeah. Then, yeah, then uh, Terry Funk kind of just, like, uh, got uh, shoved into the timekeeper's table. Then, for some reason, Terry Funk put himself through the table, yeah. Then, yeah, then, yeah, then eventually, then, uh, uh, the BWO then hit, like, the blue light special on Danny Doring and got the win. So, yeah, so the BWO uh, won the match, yeah. Then afterwards, like, Terry Funk just, like, uh, attacked the BWO some more, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, then it took, like, Paul Heyman and some security guards to really, like, uh, get Terry Funk away from the ringside area, yeah. So, yeah, so, a very average uh, match, not really anything memorable about it. <laughs> yeah, like I said, pretty much it, the most memorable stuff is just Terry Funk's interference. So, yeah, so, I'd probably give that, like, a two and a quarter. And then, next up, then we had um, uh, Tracy Smothers versus Tommy Rogers, and, uh, yeah, this really just, yeah, this really wasn't that good. I mean, yeah, very unmemorable, just kind of like a standard back and forth, or action between the two. Like, uh, throughout the match, like, you had, like, the other members of the FBI uh, getting involved while the referee's back was turned, and, like, helping Tracy Smothers um, um, beat down uh, Tommy Rogers, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, then it just did, like, kind of go, like, a uh, back and forth between them. It only lasted, like, eight minutes. Yeah, then, eventually, then, um, Tommy Rogers hit a, uh, Tamikaze on Tracy's mothers and got the win. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, very, um, just, uh, yeah, a very forgettable match. Not really anything being memorable whatsoever. And, yeah, very just substandard action. So, yeah, I would probably give that, like, two stars. Yeah. Yeah. Then afterwards, then, um, like, uh, the FBI then, like, was beating down Tommy Rogers, and then, uh, Chris Chetty then, uh, tried to, like, uh, help Tommy Rogers, but he got attacked as well, yeah? Then, yeah, then you had, like, uh, the, uh, appearance of Mabel coming out, like, as, like, a member of the FBI, and, uh, laid out Chris Chetty, and then, yeah, then, as, a uh, Mabel was helping the FBI, like, take out, uh, Chris Chetty and, uh, Tommy Rogers, then, Spike Dudley came out and made the save, yeah, then, like, got beat up, yeah, then, Mabel then, like, tried to drive Spike Dudley through a table, but Spike Dudley moved out of the way, yeah, then, like, Mabel crashed through the table, and then Spike Dudley then, like, hit an acid drop on Mabel, then, all of a sudden, like, he pinned him, like, it was as if, like, this was, like, made a match, when, like, there was nothing said, like, this was an actual match, so, yeah, so, kind of confusing, like, a commotion there, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, I'm not really, like, gonna consider the Spike so for Spike Dudley and Mabel a match. So yeah. I'm just gonna move on from that. Yeah. And then next up, then we had uh Lance Storm versus Jerry Lynn, and this was actually a pretty good match right here, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I've been saying like how this really is a very pretty forgettable show, but yeah, there were like a couple of uh, good matches on the show, yeah, and this was one, this was definitely the best match of the night, yeah, and yeah, and he also had like a two referees special guest referees for the match. You had, like, Mikey Whipwreck and Sonny as the referees. Yeah, and, yeah, and just, yeah, Sonny's uh, referee outfit just, whoa. <laughs> yeah, and this actually was a pretty good back-and-forth match between the two. Like, it really did go back-and-forth. You did, like, have a Sonny, like, a like, trying to, like, uh, screw out Landstorm, like, whenever Landstorm made covers, like, uh, Sonny would, like, uh, make very slow counts, but when Jerry Lynn had covers, like, uh, Sonny would count quicker. <laughs> yeah, and the match really did, like, go back and forth, like, some really, uh, good, uh, back and forth action between the two, like, it spilled to the outside of the ring, and there was, like, this one point where, uh, uh, Terry, um, Jerry Lynn, like, actually did, uh, it like, uh, 
like a hit a, a power bomb on Landstorm, like as a Landstorm like uh, was trying to leapfrog, which was a cool spot. Yeah. And yeah, then like uh Sonny was officiating most of this match, like Mikey Whipwreck mostly like was on the outside of the ring for the match. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, really did just like uh, go uh, back and forth, some uh, nice uh, counters in the match. At one point, uh, Jerry Lynn actually did hit a uh, pedigree on Landstorm. Yeah, and some high flying moves were using the match to the outside of the ring. Yeah, then yeah, then at one point, then uh, um, Don Marie, who was um in a uh, Landstorm's corner, was like trying to get involved in the match, but uh, yeah, Sonny like uh brought her into the ring and stripped her. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, then Mikey Whipwreck then uh, got into the ring and uh hit a uh, Don Marie with a whippersnapper. Yeah, then yeah, then. And yeah, then um, Mikey Whipwreck then uh, hit uh, Jerry Lynn with a um, whipper snapper. Yeah, but then yeah, then all of a sudden then Sonny then uh, nailed a uh, Landstorm with a whipper snapper. Yeah, then yeah, then like has a uh, Mikey Whipwreck like a uh, like a uh, he got like hit from behind by uh, I think it was uh, either Landstorm or um, um, uh, Don Marie. I forgot exactly which one that um, um. It was, but then, yeah, then, uh, yeah, then, um, Mikey Whipwreck then, uh, all of a sudden then, uh, hit, uh, Sonny with, um, a whippersnapper, thinking that she was the one that, uh, hit him, yeah, and then, yeah, then that allowed, um, uh, well, yeah, uh, Jerry Lynn, like, had, uh, Landstorm in a small package, but then, uh, Mikey Whipwreck helped, uh, Landstorm, like, uh, reverse it, and then, and, uh, Mikey Whipwreck then made a quick count for Landstorm. So, yeah, so Landstorm got the win. So, yeah, so overall, this really was, like, a pretty good match right here. I think this was definitely the best match of the show. So, I think I'd probably give that, like, uh, three and three quarters. Then, yeah, then after this, then we had uh, the ECW Tag Team Championship on the line with um, the Dudley Boys defending against... Uh, Balls Mahoney and uh, Masato Tanaka, and uh, yeah, I guess overall this was a solid tag team match. Uh, yeah, s some um, a solid back and forth action between uh, the two teams in the match. Yeah, like a uh, Big Dick Dudley and um, Sign Guy Dudley, like uh, tried to get involved in the match here, but then yeah, Axel Rotten, who was at ringside with uh, Masato Tanaka and Balls Mahoney took them out, yeah, there was, like, this cool, uh, moment where, like, the Dudley boys, like, uh, both had, uh, steel chairs, and then Masato Tanaka and Balls Mahoney just, uh, punched the chairs right into the Dudley's face, which was a cool spot, yeah, then, yeah, then, and, yeah, then at one point, then, uh, Jeff Jones came out, like, tried to, like, uh, screw out uh, Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney, but then Axel Rotten nailed him with the chair, yeah, then, yeah, then, when it looked like, yeah, then, uh, when it looked like, uh, the Dudleys could have possibly, uh, had the match won, then, um, RBD and Sabu then came out and just, uh, beat the Dudleys up and helped, uh, Masato Tanaka and, uh, Balls Mahoney beat them by, like, uh, splashing them both through tables, and so then, uh, Balls Mahoney and Masato Tanaka then were able to, uh, pin the Dudley boys, and they won the Tag Team Championship. So, yeah, so this overall, I guess, it was a solid tag team match and some cool spots with, like, the chairs and the tables and stuff. So, yeah, so I guess I would probably give that match, like, uh, three stars. Yeah. And then after this, then we had um, Just Incredible and Jack Victory versus um, uh, Tommy Dreamer and Jake the Snake Roberts. This match really was just kind of there. I mean, it, there really wasn't anything uh, memorable about it at all. I really don't remember anything that really happened in the match. Like, it just really, like, seemed to go, like, uh, back and forth. Maybe, like, there were, like, a couple of uh, of uh, finishers used in the match. Yeah, then, um, like, uh, Jason, of course, that ringside with uh, Just Incredible and uh, Jack Victory. Yeah, then you had, like, Rod Price and the one-man game coming out, like, uh, trying to, like, uh, help... Uh, uh, Jake, um, Just Incredible, and Jack Victory, like, get a, 
better advantage. But yeah, then the gangstonators then came out, and then yeah, then they fought with uh, one man gang and uh, Rod Price. Yeah, then everyone was fighting everyone. Yeah, then in all the, the commotion somewhere, then uh, Jake the Snake Roberts then hit a DDT on Just Incredible on to a ladder and pinned him. So yeah, so Jake the Snake Roberts and uh, Tommy Dreamer won the match. So yeah, so like you said. Like, uh, nothing memorable about it at all. Very forgettable match. I would give that, like, uh, two stars. Yeah. Then, yeah, then afterwards, like, uh, then, like, uh, Terry Funk came out, confronted Tommy Dreamer again. Yeah, then, yeah, then, uh, Terry Funk then, like, attacked, uh, Tommy Dreamer. Humor. So, yeah, so just, yeah, this was the last of the Terry Funk stuff. Like, like I said, like, it went on throughout the night. I know I really didn't talk about it throughout the show, but, yeah, there were just, like, a whole bunch of, uh, moments of Terry Funk just, like, uh, uh, just like, like a ranting about like ECW and stuff throughout the whole show. Yeah. All right. And then we got the main event, and it was like a, uh, it was a six man uh, tag team match with uh, the Triple Threat: Shane Douglas, Bam Bam Bigelow, and Chris Candido versus Taz, Sandman, and Rob Van Dam. Yeah. So yeah, and overall, I guess this was like a. A solid main event and yeah like uh before the match started like as a, a sabu and rvd like we're walking out the dudley boys like attacked them from behind and we're helping uh a triple threat beat them down yeah but then yeah then uh taz then uh came out and yeah then like uh yeah then like uh the dudley boys then like just like disappeared all of a sudden yeah i think like taz just like took out the dudley boys and then yeah then that they were gone after that yeah and yeah, and yeah, this was a solid uh, back and forth match. It really was just like some high flying moves and some weapon use in the match. Like, yeah, there was like this one point where like a uh, uh, Sabu like tried to like a uh, jump from like the chair onto the ropes to the outside, but yeah, like it went wrong and Sabu like had to like jump back to the chair. <laughs> so yeah, so that was kind of like a funny moment. Yeah. And yeah, then, like, uh, it did just like kind of go back and forth. Like, guys were like hitting in like uh, big moves on each other. Sometimes, like, they were missing, and, yeah, some high-flying moves throughout the match, yeah. It really just, like, was a f brawl between, like, all six guys. Like, they really just were, like, beating the hell out of each other, yeah. And, yeah, then, like, it ended with, like, a Taz, like, having Shane Douglas and a Taz mission, yeah. And as, like, he had a, a Taz mission on Shane Douglas, then, like, a Sabu then, like, a, a, a used an Arabian face buster with a chair, Hair came down on both a Shane Douglas and Taz, and then yeah, then Sabu then pinned Shane Douglas, and so then yes, uh, Taz, RVD, and Sabu all won the match. Yeah, then afterwards, like there was like some tension that like a boil between uh, Taz and Sabu, like Taz accusing uh, Sabu of like stealing the thunder from him. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so I'd like some commotion like that. Yeah, so yeah, so overall, I guess it was like it was a solid main event, and yeah, I guess like a uh, it was just fine. So, yeah. So, I would probably give that, like, uh, three stars. Yeah. So, overall, with the show, I guess I would probably give it, like, a six out of ten. Yeah. Like, a very mediocre show. Not really anything very memorable about it. And, plus, yeah. what It just is, like, like uh, very forgettable. Like, a lot of the matches are just, like, very forgettable and not memorable whatsoever. Yeah. But it did have, like, a few good matches. Like, like I said, the Lance from Jerry Lynn match was, like, a really good match. Yeah. And plus, yeah, this stuff like uh, the tag title match and the main event, those were, like, solid matches, too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I guess there is, like, a few things to, uh, like, uh, it did have, like, a few good points, but still just, it is a very forgettable show. So, yeah, so, yeah, I really don't think this show really is worth checking out. If you have to see something, check out the Lance Storm Jerry Lynn match. But, yeah, everything else, yeah, you can just skip it. This really isn't worth checking out. All right. So, yeah, so I guess that's the best way I can put it. All right. So, yeah, so I guess that's all I really have to say about this show. All right. So, this is my review of uh, ECW November to Remember 1998. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review, yeah, and yeah, and now hopefully, like, if this uh, processing issue is just fine and I can upload this without any issues, yeah, I will, like, uh, make a review later on tonight for the next ECW pay-per-view, so yeah, so hopefully that'll be coming later on tonight, so stay tuned for that, alright, but yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, so I hope you guys did enjoy this review, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.